One of the key things I always ask my patients also is the component of stress. Not that stress causes psoriasis or stress causes autoimmunity, but stress affects the immune system. Welcome to this special episode of the Doctor's Pharmacy that I call House Call. And I'm sitting down with my colleagues at the Ultra Wellness Center in Lenox, Massachusetts to discuss some difficult medical conditions that have amazing solutions using functional medicine that you won't get by going to your regular doctor. We're getting to the root cause of things. And today I'm sitting down with Dr. Todd Lapine, who's been one of our featured guests on The Doctor's Pharmacy, talking about all sorts of conditions and has the second most popular podcast on The Doctor's Pharmacy, I would say. Congratulations on that, which Thank is you. no small feat. Uh, we've been working together for 25 years, maybe 20 Long time. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> at Canyon Ranch for 10 years, and then here at the Ultra Wellness Center for over a decade. Dr. Lapine went to Dartmouth Medical School. He's board certified in internal medicine, and he's certified in functional medicine, integrative medicine, and he's one of the smartest guys out there when it comes to understanding the body and how to heal it. Uh, I've learned so much from Todd over the years as my colleague and friend, and, and we are privileged to take care of some really challenging cases at the Ultra Wellness Center. And today we're going to talk about psoriasis. So welcome, Todd. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Now, this podcast is about things that matter. And if you have psoriasis, probably nothing matters more than figuring out how to fix it because it's what they call the heartbreak of psoriasis. Yeah. And the reason is it's a miserable condition where you get thick, scaly plaques and irritation on your skin, which itches like crazy uh, and just is scarring and disfiguring. And it's just a miserable disease. Yeah. Uh, and traditional medicine doesn't really have a lot of great treatments, except ones that are extremely expensive and often come with very significant side effects. Well, yeah, very exactly. So Todd, what's the general view of psoriasis in traditional medicine? The, the general view is that it's an external condition. It's, it's a skin it, problem. It's a skin problem, exactly. It's a skin problem and it's a chronic condition and there's no cure for it. That's, mm. that's, the, mm. that's the, 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 the take home that you get uh, in, in my training. And um, it really is not a skin condition, it's a systemic condition. And uh, it, the ways in which we're treating it is really, as you said, very expensive and potentially very toxic. Um, so there are lots of things, uh, and I think this is a, 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 a probably almost like the paradigm um, condition from a functional medicine approach is where you get so much leverage because yeah. there's not one thing that causes psoriasis. There's not just one case yeah. of psoriasis. There's many variables. We were talking about that earlier, mm -hmm. how, you know, there's a, there's a genetic component to it. Mm -hmm. There's the dietary component. Uh, there's the environmental component. Uh, vitamin D is, you know, I, I, I'm a big proponent for vitamin D. And I, I have so many patients who have psoriasis who tell me that, you know, they get better in the summer when they go to the beach. Yeah. And they're in the salt water. Yeah. And they get sunshine. Well, that's one of the medical treatments is UV light, right? Absolutely. Yes. So they do stick people under lights and do light therapy in medicine, believe it or not. Yeah. Well, they all, I, think, I think they also, that's an older therapy. They used to use also, I think, or is it Puva therapy, Sorolins. He would inject it into yeah. you. And then, yeah, it's, it's like an older way. But nonetheless, UV light is very, very uh, beneficial for modulating the immune system. So it's, it's really, uh, and the one thing that really, uh, I, I'll never forget this case. And I don't know if you've, you probably have seen it yourself, but when I was in my regular conventional practice, I had a patient who, who presented with gut ate psoriasis. Remember gut ate psoriasis. Gut ate yes. psoriasis. And for those who don't know what gut ate psoriasis is, it's what happens it after. It gives you a gut ache? A gut, a gut, <laughs> that's actually, it's, no, it's actually a, it's gut a, ache with a T. But gut, yeah. It sounds like gut ache, but it could be exactly, that. Exactly. Actually, it may be that. It, it actually, may be caused by the gut. Exactly. We'll get to that. It's actually a good point. So, uh, so it's G-U-T-T-A-T-E, gut ache psoriasis. And a patient who I had treated for a strep infection, strep throat infection. Uh -huh. And then like a week or two later, she comes back and she's covered in these uh, dime to quarter size circular psoriatic lesions. And I'm like, what's going on here? So I, you know, I did a little bit of research, and I found out that that is a well-known uh, condition of a post-streptococcal gut ate psoriasis. Mm. And I treated her with an antibiotic, and guess what? Her gut ate psoriasis went away. Amazing, because you treated so, the strep, the cause. A, exactly, exactly. Now, the one thing that you don't need to realize is that strep bacteria 
is oftentimes involved in cross reactivity. That's why you know people are so so onto strep throat because mm-hmm. if you get a strep throat in yeah. certain individuals, oh, yeah. genetically susceptible individuals, they can get glomerulonephritis, so that kidney. damages your kidneys. Kidney, right? You can get rheumatic heart disease. Yeah. You can get um, Pandas syndrome, the pedi- pediatric autoimmune uh, neurodevelopmental uh, uh, strep infection. So you get this like OCD and behavioral type uh, conditions. Uh, and then so you, you get, get also- psychiatric issues, cardiac issues, kidney issues. Everything, so, right, exactly. And, and it can and be deadly. Absolutely, so, so strep bacteria play, I think, uh, probably are one of the key players in some cases of psoriasis mm. uh, in patients, absolutely, yeah. Well, that, you know, that is fascinating. So essentially, this is seen as a skin condition that's inflammatory, and the treatments are using powerful anti-inflammatory drugs, including steroids. A lot of them are topical steroids. We tell it's topical, but they use very strong ones that get absorbed. And they really suppress your own adrenal glands and have long-term consequences. And and thin the skin, because they're very, very powerful. They're not like the -the over-the-counter hydrocortisone. These are really high-potency fluorinated uh, steroids, and they get absorbed into the system. They do decrease inflammation, but they thin the skin, and you get, you know, uh, breakage of the skin and such. So there's, even though they're creams, there's systemic mm. side effects to them. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I I, um, I also see that that uh, the the drugs that are being used now that are promoted on television are oh, yeah. these very expensive. We call them immunosuppressants. They call TNF alpha blockers yeah. or, or biologics that yeah, Stelera are maybe fifty thousand dollars a year, <laughs> and they 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 can be effective and help people for sure. But they do lead to uh, immune suppression, especially in this time of COVID. If you're if you're on one of these drugs, you're much more likely to have your immune system not work when you get an infection. And exactly, and there are times, you know, when there are some patients. I have seen some patients uh, with you know either rheumatoid arthritis or s- significant psoriatic arthritis, which is psoriasis to the next degree, yeah. where you're developing uh, systemic symptoms of joint uh, inflammation. Sometimes you do have to use the biologics to in, more or less put out the fire for a period yeah. of time. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's not as though I'm against uh, biologics. There's a time and a place for everything, but for those sure. are sort of the last ditch. You yeah. know, that's like okay, you know, break the glass, pull out the emergency fire extinguisher, and put out the fire. Well, you know, it reminds me of this case I'm going to share for a minute, which is a little girl who came to see me. Was probably like four at the time, and when she was little, and and this is this is really how we think differently in functional medicine because in functional medicine we see this like you said, it's a systemic problem that happens to affect the skin, and if you're treating yeah. skin, it's just putting you know topical stuff on that doesn't really have systemic effects or get to the root cause. So functional medicine is always about the root cause. And this little girl, when I looked at her history, born by C-section, not breastfed. So already, you know, she's got a reduction in her healthy microbiome formation because going through the vaginal canal populates the gut with bacteria that are healthy. Breastfeeding provides these oligosaccharides that are essentially non-digestible food for the good bacteria. And so the kid's already set up for problems. Then got ear infections, antibiotics, just layered on, and then developed this horrible psoriasis, you know, at a very young age, like a year old. Skin was just covered with it. And the kid was on and off steroids, antibiotics for skin infection, because often if the psoriasis is bad, it'll break down the skin, the skin will get infected, and you get this vicious cycle. And this girl ended up on one of these drugs, these biologics to suppress mm-hmm. her immune system, because she had it all over her body. And she ended up in the intensive care unit wow. with sepsis for a month. And the reason she got sepsis or overwhelming systemic infection was because her immune system was suppressed on the drugs, and it was this vicious cycle. So the parents came to me were desperate, and this little girl was so sweet. She had really head to toe psoriasis. Yeah, yeah. It was it was not yeah, yeah, the really, normal yeah. kind, and 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 she went to the bathroom in my office, and she was screaming when she went to go pee because the peeing hurt because she had all over her vagina. Yeah, this kid was just a mess. A mess. And I'm like, well, you know, let's start with the basics: uh, diet, <laughs> and 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 also helping her gut get sorted out. And I, I think for, for most people with inflammation in their body or an autoimmune disease, the, the main thing we look at is the gut. Mm-hmm. And for this little girl, um, I started with an elimination diet, gluten, dairy. And gluten, you know, if I look at psoriasis, it's probably one of the biggest factors. Yeah, absolutely. So I got rid of the gluten, got rid of the dairy, cleaned up her diet, got rid of the sugar and stuff. And, and, and because of all the antibiotics and the steroids, and the immune suppressant shit, I gave her an antifungal just on an assumption because there's a lot of evidence that yeast plays a role or fungal yep. infections play a role. That's why they use sort of antifungal shampoos for scalp psoriasis or dandruff. Yep. And I got a, I, I put her on this program. I got a call from the father uh, a couple of weeks later and I'll, how's she doing? And he said, she's 
almost completely cleared. Her skin completely <laughs> cleared within like a few weeks. Wow. Uh, and then she did really, really well for a long time. And then her scalp just never recovered. And I said, what is she eating? Well, she's having gluten-free oats. And I'm like, mm -mm. I think, you know, oats, even though they say gluten-free, right. are often cross-contaminated or not perfectly gluten-free. Uh, and so I got her off of that and her scalp cleared and uh, the kid's fine. And so this is a case where you do something really simple and when I... And, and when you get an incredible result by fixing the root cause. And when I did her testing, she did. She had terrible gut microbiome on the stool testing. She had elevated antibodies to gluten. We use not just a regular celiac or antibody right. test, but we look at 20 different proteins that are in wheat and gluten, and we look at antibodies against them, and she just lit up like a Christmas yep. tree. Yep. So I was like, wow, this is the worst I've ever seen. And yet wow. she got better so fast by dealing with the right cause right well that that's a, yeah that, that that's the kind of case that really sticks in your head and and the one thing about psoriasis is i think also it's it's you know people view it people who have it it's one thing if you have like a couple of lesions on your elbows and they're hidden it's not a big deal but if people have really bad psoriasis it's pretty much like having leprosy I mean, yeah. really, you just, you you pretty much don't want to, you know, expose your skin. You don't want to go out bathing. And, it's embarrassing. And it's, embar it's embarrassing. All right. And people think it's contagious. You know, it's, it's all these, you know, these sort of myths about it. And, and it, it definitely has, I think, a psychological toll for people who have really significant psoriasis. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's a, there definitely is that, that psychological uh, component to it. And, you know, and you see these advertisements where, you know, I think there shows people like by the pool with, you know, taking their, their biologic so that they can, you know, now go bathing. But, you know, you got to take this expensive, <laughs> expensive toxic medications just to jump in the pool. <laughs> yeah, you, and, you and I are old enough to remember a time when there was no advertising for drugs on television. Right. Right. And, Absolutely. and what these advertisement do is they work. And the studies have shown that 40% yeah. of the time when the patient goes to the doctor and says, hey doc, I saw this ad for blah, blah, blah on TV. Can I get that drug? Right. They're like, sure. Yeah. So yeah. these are working and that's why they spend billions and billions of dollars on these ads. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's wrong because in, fu in functional medicine, there is an incredible pathway to help these patients. Do you have any other cases that come to mind? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I just I had a recent uh, a case where, and this was like a, a very interesting case because the patient had a, a little bit of a perfect storm for uh, uh, getting setups for psoriasis. The patient developed a lot of strep throat infections in her 20s. So all of a sudden she's developed lots of strep for whatever reason, maybe, you know, contamination from her kids or uh, whatever, and then was put on a variety of different uh, antibiotics. And then uh, after uh, the birth of one of her uh, children, she had a uh, cholecystectomy because she developed gallstones. Yeah. A gallbladder out. Gallbladder out, exactly. Gallbladder out. And there's actually some really interesting evidence about the role of the uh, bile acids in uh, uh, psoriasis. It's really quite interesting. Mm. And that's what sort of uh, triggered it. And then, then to sort of add fuel to the fire, the patient was on, guess what? A PPI. All right, Acid blocking. Proton drug. pump inhibitor, you know, the, the purple pill, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, and that's, uh, we're going to talk about that in the next uh, podcast. So this patient was a little bit of a setup for a, a perfect storm for developing uh, psoriasis, then also had some stress uh, in, in their life. And then also one of the other things that uh, you see in psoriasis in some patients is metabolic syndrome. If you're overweight, if you have prediabetes, that's another uh, potential risk factor for uh, developing uh, psoriasis. Um, and then uh, originally the patient had, uh, if I recall, uh, had a vitamin D level originally uh, that was in the single digits. Yeah, which should be like 40 or 50. And you're saying it was like less like than 10. Less than 10, less than 10. Which is okay. very, very, very So long. this is, I get on my, I get on my soapbox here because um, this is my, my, one of my things that I'm really, uh, I just love to talk about this is that a low vitamin D level is not the problem. It's a symptom of the problem. So, okay. so, so, so that, so vitamin D is a biomarker for sunshine exposure. We talked earlier about the use of sunshine and ultraviolet light, yeah. which you get through sunlight exposure. So yes, sunlight can cause skin cancer. Uh, it's associated with, you know, photo aging and wrinkles and all that kind of thing. So excess amount of sunlight and sunburn is not healthy for you. But healthy sun exposure is really, really beneficial. Just cover your face and put a hat on. Yeah. Put sunblock on your face. But the rest of your body, 
get exposed to healthy sunshine. Yeah. I, absolutely. So, and then in the winter, uh, you know, I personally will take vitamin D uh, uh, during the fall and the winter because you're not going to get it. If you live north of the Mason-Dixon line, you're not going to get the uh, the healthy uh, sunshine. But, but I push back on that talk because I see patients in the summer think, oh, I'm not taking my vitamin D in the summer. And, you know, they think it's fine. They're just out walking. But you need to have full body exposure for 20 minutes between 10 and 2 above, you know, above. <laughs> and, and, and if you live below Atlanta, you know, you're, yes. it's tough to get. And and I think it's only in the summer, but people aren't, aren't getting that exposure. So they're often low in the summer. The other, and the other clinical pearl to this, Mark, and I learned this from another doctor who was, uh, she practiced down in Mexico. And she used to see a lot of people in Mexico with low vitamin D. And you think, oh, they got plenty of sun down there. Well, Lo and behold, on, on your skin is uh, sebum, which is a waxy substance. Uh -huh. And that, that uh, sebum material uh, is a cholesterol derivative. And you have to have healthy oil on your skin to get photoactivated by the ultraviolet light. Uh -huh. So guess what? What do most people do every day? They Shower. bathe in hot soap and water all the time. And now it's one thing if you're outside, you know, you're digging in the dirt and you really get dirty, but most people don't need to be bathing in hot soap and water every day. Yeah. I mean, you can, you know, bathe with a soap and water to your, your uh, uh, the, the private parts and your, your armpits. But we overbathe. So yeah. what, guess what we do? We wash off that healthy uh, oil on the skin, mm. which prevents the synthesis of vitamin D. That's a clinical pearl. Oh, that's good. Because see, I, I only use soap and water on those you know private parts, as you say. And the rest, I just water. And exactly. I don't, I don't actually wash my body with soap. Exactly. And I think it may... And I, I, you know, there are some people that... You know, I should announce that. They'll, but... they'll, bathe, they'll, bathe, they'll bathe like twice a day. I think I, mean, I smell okay. I don't yeah, know. How yeah, am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So so vitamin D, again, is a biomarker for uh, the, the uh, sunshine exposure. And there's a great um, uh, video, which I oftentimes uh, will have my patients watch, uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, I would highly recommend everybody go to it. It's a two-minute video. It's called mm. The Indoor Generation. Mm. I don't know if you've seen it. Yeah. It's fantastic. And it talks about how we as uh, human beings spend most of our time clothed and indoors. Yeah. And it, uh, it actually has an effect on the immune system yeah. and it has an effect on our uh, immune system uh, indirectly because of sunshine, lack of sunshine, vitamin D. Yeah. And it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's a great visual uh, about mm. trying to mm. uh, get ourselves outside in fresh air and sunshine. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Hyman. Thanks for tuning into The Doctor's Pharmacy. I hope you're loving this podcast. It's one of my favorite things to do and introducing you to all the experts that I know and I love and that I've learned so much from. And I want to tell you about something else I'm doing, which is called Mark's Picks. It's my weekly newsletter. And in it, I share my favorite stuff from foods to supplements to gadgets to tools to enhance your health. It's all the cool stuff that I use and that my team uses to optimize and enhance our health. And I'd love you to sign up for the weekly newsletter. I'll only send it to you once a week on Fridays. Nothing else, I promise. And all you have to do is go to drhyman.com forward slash picks to sign up. That's drhyman.com forward slash picks, P-I-C-K-S, and sign up for the newsletter and I'll share with you my favorite stuff that I use to enhance my health and get healthier and better and live younger, longer. Now back to this week's episode. You know, I just uh, listened to you talk and, and it, you know, the problem with traditional medicine is we don't have a methodology to navigate to the cause of the problem. And we have the ability to diagnose something based on what it looks like, where it is in the body and the pathology, and that's what we follow. So psoriasis is a diagnosis that tells you the name of what's wrong with you, but doesn't tell you the cause. Exactly. Right? And so you can have psoriasis, but it could be four or five different things like gluten, yeast, a microbiome issue, the strep, yep. the you know heavy metals. Uh, all kinds of issues that the people aren't vitamin Gen D issues. Genetics. Genetics, right. So so we have to really navigate for that particular person what the cause is. And and it's different for different people. I just show one more case, and then I want to talk about how we work up the cases. So this was a patient that came to see me who had psoriatic arthritis. Yeah, which is, yeah the patient I was talking about, same thing. Yeah, which means that joints get destroyed. So it's not just the skin, but it's starting to affect the joints. It's an autoimmune issue. And these drugs are you know, expensive. And she had all these other issues that she complained about. So she goes to the dermatologist and he's like, okay, I'm going to treat your psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. And the rheumatologist gives her the rheumatology drugs. But she also had terrible bloating and irritable bowel and reflux and she was on acid blockers and she was 
uh, struggling with bloating after eating and bacterial overgrowth and she had depression and she had prediabetes and she was overweight and she was inflamed everywhere and she was depressed and she couldn't sleep. I mean, it was like, she was a mess. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, what's going on? Well, her one of her most bothersome symptoms was this terrible bloating after eating, yeah. which we call SIBO or bacterial overgrowth. We've talked about it on the podcast. Essentially, the ba bugs grow in the small intestine. The, you eat food and then they ferment it and it blows up and you, you, get, you feel like you have a food baby. Well, I treated her with an antibiotic to clear out the bad bugs. I gave her an antifungal to clear out the yeast and I rebuilt her gut using what we call the 5R program in functional medicine, which is a gut restoration program. And I gave her basic multivitamin, vitamin D and fish oil, not, not a whole lot of stuff. Probiotics, you know, get her gut healthy. And uh, she comes back six weeks later and she's lost 25 pounds. Her depression's gone. She's sleeping. She's got no more bacterial overgrowth, no more reflux, no more heartburn. She's off her drug. She's, she, I didn't tell her to stop the biologic she was on for arthritis. She stopped it. Her psoriasis was gone. Her arthritis was gone. Her bacterial overgrowth was gone. Everything was gone in six weeks. And I'm like, it, it, it may sound like a miracle, but it's not a miracle. It's just using the right strategy yeah. and the right map to figure out what's wrong with the person. And Absolutely. we do this over and over in functional medicine. Right. So if you're out there suffering from the heartbreak of psoriasis or eczema or yeah. acne, all these skin conditions, they're systemic conditions that we have to think about the cause. So Todd, tell us how do we figure out in functional medicine what the root cause is? What are the tests that we do? How do we look at patients differently? And let's get into what we do to treat them. Yeah, so some of the testing that I like to uh, use uh, is uh, looking at uh, gluten sensitivity, as you mentioned before. Uh, we'll do the uh, testing where we check for the antibodies against gluten and the breakdown products of gluten. So gluten is this big, long protein, and proteins are made up of amino acids, and they have to get chopped up. And uh, the test that we do, uh, which is the uh, Cyrex uh, testing uh, um, in it looks at a whole bunch of different protein fragments of gluten, the gluten protein, and that shows antibodies to this. That's, a, I think, a very, very valuable test. Uh, the one caveat is that if patients are on immunosuppressant medications yeah. or steroids, you may get a false negative test. Yeah, or um, if, they, if they've been taking immunoglobulins, which is like uh, for different disease yeah, treatments, yeah. they can get false positives. Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, so that test is very helpful. And then testing for uh, intestinal permeability, uh, the test that uh, I- Leaky gut. Leaky gut, leaky, leaky gut. So in my exp explanation to patients, patients say, well, what is leaky gut? Okay, it's very, I, you know, very, very simple. Just imagine you have a screen door in your house and the screen door lets the air in, right? but it keeps the mosquitoes out. Yeah. Right? And it, when you have leaky gut, your screen door has holes in it and the yeah. mosquitoes that are coming in. <laughs> yeah. and that's that's essentially leaky gut. That's the yeah. best way to understand it. I mean, it's more complicated that's than that. Good. But I use a coffee filter. I'm like, you've got coffee filter lets in the coffee, but not the grinds. But right, right, right. Same it's, idea. Same idea, same <laughs> idea. And uh, so the leaky gut test is really good because what it does is it checks for the antibodies to zonulin. So zonulin is this molecule. Alessio Fasano did a whole bunch of research, fantastic. He's a Harvard research. expert on Har celiac. Yeah, right? yeah, Harvard expert on celiac and the connection between celiac and all different kinds of autoimmune conditions. So when your body uh, uh, has leaky gut, it produces zonulin. And over time, zonulin uh, uh, can cause antibody formation to the zonulin. So when you have antibodies to zonulin, it tells you that over time, you've had long pr protective periods. You've got a periods. leaky gut. Leaky gut, exactly. Yeah. And you can have transient leaky gut. Like every time anybody, even if you don't have celiac, anybody who eats gluten will have transient leaky gut. Yeah. Your zonulin levels will go up, but then they come down. Um, but when you have antibodies to the uh, zonulin, that's when you really know that's more of a chronic kind of condition. Yes. And then the other- And you don't have to have celiac, by the way. Exactly. So you could just have gluten sensitivity. Yes. And this whole phenomenon of non-celiac gluten sensitivity yeah. is very real. It and affects millions and millions of people. Absolutely. And it's linked to all sorts of conditions, including a lot of autoimmune diseases. And it's a, it's a spectrum mm -hmm. illness because I've had patients who had- no symptoms for the throughout their life, and all of a sudden they develop full blown celiac disease. Yes, you know, you've seen that, I'm sure. Yeah, of course, many times. And that's and that's probably related to yes, it, there's a genetic component. Yes, there's an exposure component. It's probably also related to the microbiome because yeah. the microbiome is also tied in with celiac. That's uh, right too. So it's it's really interesting. And then the other part of the leaky gut test, which I really like, is checking for antibodies against the LPS or lipopolysaccharides. These are the coatings of the gram negative bacteria in the gut. These and are like the bacterial toxins. Exactly. And the, they get absorbed. Endotoxins, exactly. And then they, your immune system reacts. Your, and your immune system does not like these things. They yeah. don't. It's like when they when it sees the uh, the, the gram negative endotoxins, it says, "Okay, full steam ahead. We're gonna like really try to." Uh, 
uh, counteract this, and that's where you get this sus real systemic inflammation. I mean, that's essentially what you t you know when you talk about sepsis. I mean, that's when you get sepsis, you're getting uh, bacterial uh, endotoxins in your bloodstream, and then you get a full a full uh, cytokine storm. That's yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. It's incredible. So we'll look at uh, antibodies against gluten, against things that relate to leaky gut. We'll look at cross reactions to yep. other proteins that are in your food, yep. whether it's dairy or other grains, which are really common. So what happens is the gluten often opens the door, yep. literally the leaky gut, and then all these other food proteins leak in and your body starts to react to those. So you get in this yep. vicious cycle. Exactly. Yeah. And getting rid of the gluten and healing the gut can usually help reverse a lot of that, but it's it's a big issue. Then yep. we also look at stool testing. Right? Absolutely. So why yeah. are we looking at poop for the skin? Exactly. That's a good, it's a good point. So, yeah, so the microbiome and, and I, you know, there's, a, it, it's interesting because, you know, you know, it, what is a healthy microbiome mark? That's, that's, you know, what is a, what is what we call a eubiosis? You know, it's, yeah. it's, it varies. It's a very interesting concept. And what do we call dysbiosis? What is a, you know, uh, what is an unhealthy microbiome? Yeah. I also want to write a book called Paleo Poop. Paleo poop, right, right. Which is, <laughs> right. what is the, what is the indigenous microbiome? Exactly. What is, what is it yeah. that we actually had as we were exactly. evolving to exactly. keep us healthy? I, yeah, absolutely. Because there's, there's no autoimmune diseases. There's no psoriasis in hunter-gatherer. Yeah, yeah. There's no autoimmune disease. Exactly. Right? There's yeah. no Very, allergies. Yeah. Right? I mean, and to, some, to some degree, you know, just like, you know, there's a, there's a museum, not a museum, but a, uh, it's a, uh, a research institute that actually has in uh, in cold storage all the seeds of the world. Yes, and I think that we actually need to freeze good poop. Because, I agree. Because I we, 100 we, we may be running I, out of good I'm poop. Like, we need to go to the Amazon and find that paleo poop. <laughs> exactly. That's the Hadza a, in Africa. We need to go. Yeah, exactly. it's true because we we really don't know even what the total healthy microbiome looks like, yeah. and it can change very quickly depending and, on your diet. If you absolutely. become a vegan, it looks one way. If you go paleo, it looks yeah. another way. So it's a, it changes it's, very quickly it's, in response it's, to your and, diet. Exactly. And and the, and the thing about it is that the the, the microbiome is a dynamic it's not a static uh, uh process it's it's, it's always changing mm. and there are a variety of different companies out there that that do testing uh, the, the test that i like and i right now that i think is probably the clinically uh, most beneficial one is the gi map test mm. because it does quantitative pcr um it's a great test it's not a perfect test and there is no perfect test yeah. out there well, there, there really is there's a lot of like sure. controversy over like well what test there's there's you know there's all different ones there's the biome one and the the um uh, genova we G use G GIF. GIF. yeah there's a whole bunch there's yeah. a whole bunch of them out there and they all have their their role um but i i think the the quantitative pcr which is very very sensitive and the the, the thing the key thing about that particular test is it's so sensitive it'll pick up uh, a bacterial DNA, which may or may not be significant. Like oftentimes, sometimes you'll see like- They have uh, RNA, e right? They R yeah, R yeah, R yeah, RNA. Um, and it'll pick up um, bacterial DNA that, that you know, let's say you ate a hamburger and it was a little bit raw, you might have a little bit of enterohemorrhagic hemorrh 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 E. coli, and it may come up on the stool test. But right. Does that mean you have an infection from it? No. Right. But I'd rather have a test showing me lots of data, and then I can use my clinical judgment to sure. say, okay, what's what's going on here? Um, so, and, and, and some people uh, don't know how to really read the test, mm. in my opinion, because they mm. overread the test. Yeah. You yeah. need to read it sure. in the context. Um, and I think that as time goes on, the, the stool tests are going to get better. We're going to have, you know, more clinical utility yeah. of them. Uh, and, and, and again, we're still, we're just in the infancy stage of mm. learning about the gut microbiome. So we, we do food sensitivity testing, gluten testing. Stool testing, look at vitamin D. Vitamin the, D. the other thing I often think about is heavy metals. And there's a subset of patients who have autoimmune disease that have heavy metals because these compounds are toxic and they're immunotoxic at very low levels. Yeah. So it's not like you have to have a toxic load of this, but it may just trigger an immune response. So often I've helped patients looking at their heavy metal load. So we do maybe challenge tests and other approaches. So now we've got the data. We're looking at their gut. We're looking at food. We're looking at vitamin D. We're looking at metals. Maybe look at other factors. You know, what what do we do for these patients? How do we start to treat these patients? What is the functional medicine approach? Well, what one of the key things I always ask my patients also is the component of stress. Not that stress causes psoriasis or stress causes autoimmunity, but stress affects the immune system. It affects everything else. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I always get a handle on how much stress do you are you having in your life, and also how is your sleep. Those, those two things, um, if you're not getting good sleep and if you're under stress, that's like throwing gasoline on a fire. Yeah. And, and you're, you're not going to fix the issue until you address a good circadian rhythm and you also ad address a person's uh, stress and lifestyle. Those are, those are key things 
to because uh, that's not going to cure your you know your autoimmune condition. But I can't tell you the number of times that I've had a patient who had an autoimmune condition that was triggered by a very stressful event: a divorce, of loss course, of a job, of loss of a child, you name it. And Ab- stress alone can cause leaky gut. Absolutely, yes, right? yeah. Uh, Even in yeah. healthy people. Exactly. Also, yeah. Absolutely, yes, yeah. yeah. So you know, as you said, you know, you address diet, and you know, the low hanging fruit are uh, things like uh, gluten, dairy, sugar. What about uh, grains? Do you put people out grains, on an autoimmune abs- paleo diet? Yeah, yeah. I, I, the autoimmune paleo diet, for people who have significant autoimmune conditions, the AIP diet, I think, is probably uh, the go-to diet. What is diet. that? That's where you eliminate uh, uh, gluten, uh, sugar, grains, uh, dairy, and uh, beans. Beans. Nuts. Yeah, like, well, and lectins. Lectins are another thing that potentially can play a role in some individuals causing leaky gut. Um, and nuts and seeds and eggs even are taken out. Yeah. So if you're really in an extreme situation... The idea isn't to be extremely restricted your whole life, but to remove all the things that are potentially a trigger for a short time, see what happens. If your skin clears up, then you can start adding things back. Exactly. Right? Add the nuts, add the eggs, add the nightshades, add you know all those things and see what happens. Yeah, and the, point, the, and the point of an elimination diet is not to eliminate all those foods for the rest of your life. Because a lot of patients say, well, I can't do that. Well, I tell them, well, let's do it for like two months and let's see what happens. And it's sort of like you know cleaning the slate. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's basically decreasing the immunogenic load to the immune system via the gut. Most of your immune system is in the gut. So when you're eating these foods, uh, it can trigger the immune system. It can feed the uh, the bacteria. Uh, not only are you eating the food, but the bacteria are eating the food. So it's not just eliminating the foods, but it's also feeding the good microbiome with, key, key with lots of polyphenols and fibers and right. good and, foods. And, and we talked about that earlier, about the uh, acromancia and you know, yeah. the acromancia uh, um, uh, a shake, if you will, using polyphenols to increase that. And it's a protective yeah. uh, type of bacteria. So again, and then eventually you can then start adding in those foods. The one food that I'll never add in, if somebody has a gluten sensitivity, I just like, that's it. That's that's it right. I tell them it's kryptonite. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go like near that. it. Don't like go that. near that's it. Good. Yeah. Don't go near so, it. So we do that, but then not just eliminating food, but then we have to repair the gut. So, and how do we do that? Well, you repair the gut. Uh, use you can use food also. Uh, ghee can be also very helpful. Uh, bone broth uh, with uh, which is high in uh, collagen uh, peptides. Um, you can also use butyrate. Um, uh, butyrate is probably one of my favorite uh, go-to things nowadays. Yeah. Uh, our body produces butyrate, so when we eat bene- uh, beneficial fibers. Uh, high fibers will actually get broken down and the body produces butyrate. But some people don't have those bugs that produce the butyrate. Mm. So you can actually use butyrate in supplement form. And actually some uh, uh, interventional uh, integrative doctors have used butyrate enemas uh, for people with uh, uh, ulcerative uh, colitis and ulcerative proctitis. Absolutely. So So those are things. And glutamine can be uh, helpful. Aloe uh, can be uh, really uh, beneficial. And probiotics and prebiotics. Probiotics, exactly, yeah. Um, And sometimes we also use medication to clear out all the bad guys. I call it the weeding, seeding, and feeding program. Yep. Because if there's a lot, and particularly in in psoriasis, I think, you know, people are cautious about any fungals like Diflucan. But, but, uh, you know, I've used this for 30 years. It's extremely safe drug. Uh, It really knocked what it had not one complication. People get some die off. One patient, I think, had with another doctor in our practice had a liver issue and tried it and it made the liver issue worse. But if your liver is okay, yeah. it's really a pretty safe drug and it can be profoundly effective uh, in a subset of patients. Are you talking about diflucan? Yes. Yeah, diflucan. diflucan. Yeah. I mean, the one thing with that is, is, is I think drug-drug interaction. So if somebody's not on any drugs, they're, they're much less likely to get complications. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, like you said, if you have underlying liver disease, you've got to be very cautious. But if you're not on any other medications and there's no underlying liver disease, it is quite safe. Yeah. I mean, people are afraid of antifungals because when we were in training, you and I, back in the day, there weren't a lot of these newer antifungals. There was the old one called amphotericin, which we called amphoterrible because yeah. <laughs> it had terrible side effects. Yep. But now the new ones are not so bad. So we, we also may have to go deeper than that, even maybe looking at heavy metals and detoxification. So we really have a systematic way. Uh, and, and believe it or not, if you if you really focus on your diet and clean up your gut, uh, it often goes a long way. And you can do this on your own without even seeing a doctor. Yeah. By following the, the the instructions we gave, we're looking at some of my books like the 10 Day Detox Diet, which provides that kind of infl- anti inflammatory diet. So I'm really kind of excited that that people can have hope for psoriasis. Because yeah, when absolutely. I see someone's psoriasis, I get so excited. Yeah. I'm like, slam dunk. You know, this is this is what we got in functional medicine. Some things are harder, like some yeah. things are harder to treat for sure. Absolutely. You have cancer, other problems. But this is one of those diseases in functional medicine that like, people should just not suffer from this. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Acne, eczema, psoriasis, all these things are skin conditions that are starting 
as systemic problems that show up on the skin and you can't just lather it on the skin and hope it's going to work. Exactly. And then also the, the whole uh, aspect that it's not, you know, psoriasis can lead into psoriatic arthritis, which really tells you it's not a skin condition. You right. really shouldn't be seeing a dermatologist, in right. my opinion, for psoriasis. So yeah. if you're, you're you need to see an inflammologist. Yeah, right. That's us. A psychoneuroimmunoendogodologist like us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Todd, this is great. So for you listening out there, if you know anybody, if you've been suffering from psoriasis or skin conditions, have hope because using this way of thinking, functional medicine, we can really help these patients tremendously. Absolutely. We shared a bunch of cases. Some of them are pretty extreme and, and they do well. Yeah. Uh, so we, we at the Ultra Wellness Center here have been doing this for 15 years. Uh, before that, we all were at the Canyon Ranch together for another 10 years before that. So we, we have literally decades of decades of experience with these kinds of problems. And we'd love to see you. We're doing all virtual consults now so people don't have to travel here and they can do it over Zoom. And we can really help you with remote uh, consultations and testing and working up what's going on yeah. and helping you. So I, I think for those of you who are interested, we're here to help uh, and we'd love to see you. So I think, uh, Todd, you are just one of those incredible thinkers in functional medicine. You teach all over the world, not anymore, <laughs> all over Zoom maybe. <laughs> right. I'm like teaching from my office up in my house. Uh, and I'm just so thrilled that we get to have these conversations yeah. about problems that are causing so much needless suffering. Absolutely. And now we can really solve them. So thank you for joining us again yeah. on The Doctor's Pharmacy. If you love this podcast, please share it with your friends and family on social media. Leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us about your issues and how you've maybe found a way to help them and show everybody else what can be done and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and we'll see you next time on the yeah. doctor's pharmacy all right great thank thank you Mario. i'll just i'm going to end right there because um it, there's really a, a wonderful uh vi video on youtube this is called the big farmer rant you probably have seen it with, no. with bill, bill maher it's a really good one and, oh and and, and he, he basically he ends it by saying you know because in functional medicine what we do is we try to get pa patients better yeah. so that th we don't see them anymore yeah i mean it's like i'm it's trying true. to put myself out of business it's true okay it's funny. and, and it, what he says is there's no money in healthy people yeah and there's no money in dead people. Yeah. But you can make a lot of money in really sick like people who are chronic who keep seeing you That's and, the and they spend fifty thousand yeah. dollars a year on, you know, uh medications. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> but you know, it's true. We we definitely have the problem where we see people, we get them better, and then we don't hear from them. Yeah, which <laughs> and is And then, good. and then you go, what happened? And then, well, you know, five years later, they call about something else. Oh, I was totally better. I'm cured. I don't know why. I'm fine. Yeah. Well, like I just talked to someone like that yesterday. It was yeah. like, oh wow, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it is. So anyway, thank you for joining us in the doctor's pharmacy. Thanks. Okay.